In this video I'm going to give a little update on my Wanho Duplicator 9 Mark II 3D printer and talk about how I hope to turn all of this into a 3D printed flying wing. Okay, so hopefully if all goes well, um, there'll be two parts to this video. This one part here and then second one, hopefully at a later date, a flying wing. Um, a few people have asked me, you know, how am I getting on with the Wanho Duplicator 9 Mark II? Uh, and the answer is really well. I had some initial kind of calibration issues. I guess like, I think I personally think you have all these issues with 3D printers. 3D printers aren't kind of mainstream enough that they just do their thing. You need to you know calibrate them and keep on top of stuff. Uh, and really the boldest thing I've ever decided to try and print is what you see in front of me here. Uh, I'm trying to print a 3D flying wing. You've seen some other videos on my channel. I'm into RC quads and, and stuff like this. So I'm really excited about having a go at printing this. So this has all been printed on um, my Wanho Duplicator 9. You can see there's different colors, but the original plan was to do red and black. Um, however, I had one failed print, which kind of used up a little bit more PLA than I had. So then I had to switch to the orange to finish it off. But again, this is you know, not some uh, garage queen type of uh, thing I'm trying to do here. It's something to test out and see if this is gonna work. A couple of things I've noticed since I finished the print, it's not a, a print quality issue, it's a slicing issue. So I don't know how it works when I come across in these videos, but this, these aren't perfectly flat. And the reason for that is when the software has done the slicing, it hasn't printed any kind of structure within the part, which means it's not as rigid as it should be. So I'm not sure if this is gonna impact the flight or, or not. Uh, the end of it's not the end of the world. In total, it's cost me about 15 pounds to print. Um, and the parts that I bought, basically the motor and stuff, I was gonna steal uh, from another uh, wing, but it's 50 pounds or, or about 55 pounds for those, which I'm gonna use on another project. So I've ordered those. Um, also, I didn't create this. I'll put a link in the description to the guy um, that modeled this and made it available. Um, and obviously read the instructions better than I did to make sure that you print uh, and get the internal rigidity. But in general, I think came out okay. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, I printed a raft with these and you also print them majority without any infill. So all these have got zero infill. You see a little hole kind of came in at the end of that one. So I just reprinted another. So again, not the end of the world. Just sort all these things out. A couple of bits I still need to kind of get rid of some of the support structures, but I can do that. Um, but a lot of this should all just kind of slide together. The way it's been constructed is it should slide and glue uh, at the same time. So I just need to work out what order everything needs to go into and then fit it together. Um, the motor mount and the firewall piece, he does recommend not to print in PLA. Uh, I didn't have anything else, so I'm just printing in PLA for now, see how we get on. Uh, this was with 50% infill, so everything else was 0%. That was 50%. And then I did print the nose with 0%, uh, but it was recommended at 30%, which I've done. But to be honest, I noticed really hardly any difference. It doesn't seem to be really any heavier or anything. So yeah, we'll see how we go. But I'm excited you know, about doing a project like this. And hopefully, I'm, I think the quality of this print is really good. Um, and again, I'm not an expert in 3D printing, so I'm sure I, there's things I could do better to make my printer work better. Um, but this kind of hopefully answers that question. You know, can you get great prints with the Wanho Duplicator 9 Mark II? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, I have noticed an improvement in print quality. Now I've moved my 3D printer stuff out into my workshop where the temperature is much more constant and there's less vibrations because it's not walking past in the cave and everything. So that may have helped. And um, yeah, I use Cura, the latest version of Cura for all of my slicing, which works well as well. And then the only other thing, not that I think it's totally significant uh, in this, with my um, Wanho Duplicator 9, I did have some issues initially using AstroPrint that sometimes the, the print would 
kind of just stop midway through and say, I could never work out what it was. Um, and so I just stopped using that. I was printing from the SD card all the time. All of this was printed via um, Astro Print. So I didn't have anything on SD card all over um, my network. This was you know, printed and uploaded to Astro Print on the Raspberry Pi that I've got connected up to it. So I've got other videos on that if you're interested. But yeah, hope this you know, reaffirms I'm happy with the printer. No regrets. I love the fact it's a big platform. And now I just need to kind of do a little time lapse of me trying to work out how these things go together. I can slide and glue some stuff together to kind of get things working. And uh, yeah, then we'll see what the end result looks like. And then in a few weeks, months time, uh, one, depending on when I get the parts, two, when I can get the time to put it together. And obviously with the COVID-19 thing, uh, we shouldn't be out and about having fun only if we really need to go somewhere. So I have got a field in front of my house. Um, so I may go in there and I feel that that's kind of okay uh, to do that. Um, but we'll, make, we'll see what's going on in, uh, in life. So I'm gonna try and kind of organize this stuff in a way that I think makes sense. And then, yeah, try and uh, put it together. But uh, now I'm really happy with how this is all kind of turned out print quality wise. Okay, so I'm trying to get things laid out and work out what to do. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've realized that not following the instructions properly has now screwed some things up for me. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of bodging, which is fantastic. Um, but basically, the way it's suggested to print these is to not have any bottom and top layers. I thought, well, it'd just make it stronger. Um, and also, like I mentioned, didn't have the kind of internal structuring. So one of the problems I have now is that obviously you're supposed to be able to run cables in and out of all these things. There's different holes at different points. Uh, but sometimes like where, uh, just to give an example, so here's where a servo would go. There's a hole there for the cabling to come out and a hole here for the servo to sit in and a hole that the, the wiring will go through and then come out of this side. But of course, I can't get the wiring there because there's no hole. So certain things I'm gonna not be able to glue until I've got the, um, the servos and stuff so I can position them in and then use uh, my soldering iron just basically as a hot knife to make holes like I have done in some of these parts here. So there's some things that I think I can stick together. Like I think the fuselage, um, actually that's not gonna work either because I need a camera. The camera needs to go. Oh, actually no, I can, I can stick it here. It's just, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna have to end up, again, using a, a soldering iron to kind of retrofit some holes. So just need to be careful what I do and how I do it. So let's let's see how we can make this work. So I'm just using some um, Gorilla Glue, Gorilla Glue Super Glue, the, the brush and nozzle version, because I figured that it might be helpful if I can just brush things on around the edge, as opposed to trying to dribble things on with um, the nozzle. So let's see how well this works. Probably should put the camera in there first, shouldn't I? But again, too late now. I've put the glue on, I'm committed. So we just need to work out the orientation and not stick my fingers to this. Glue's hurt my eyes. <laughs> I think one of the issues is going to be just trying to get these things lined up well whilst they're gluing. We made progress, we're off to a start. I think I might just put some glue around these edges. 
Hopefully the glue's not gonna eat away at the plastic. But yeah, like I said, I'm really happy with the quality of the print. The, the issue is, is the, the person doing the printing as opposed to the, the files or the printer. So. But it wasn't that bad to print. Like one thing that I have noticed actually, which is one of the reasons why I won't, I just decided to kind of carry on with this build regardless of the issues, is I've pretty much run out of plastic. Uh, and um, the, the price of plastic seems to have like, doubled uh, since the coronavirus has kicked off. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid, you know, buying more until things kind of settle down a bit. But, um, yeah, so we'll see what we can do. So all I'll do is I'll glue up the rest of the things. I was getting my fingers stuck on it and uh, then come back and show you kind of what progress I've made. So far I'm where I've had to stop because I just can't glue things until I get um, the rest of the parts together. Okay, so it's been a few hours. Uh, finally got around to kind of putting all the things together. So the main fuselage here, I've glued uh, from the front to the kind of the midsection here where it kind of then spans into the wingspan. So as I've kind of mentioned already in this video, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, it's because I'm learning as I'm going here. I didn't print this um, without um, the tops and bottoms, which now I'm realizing I should have done. Um, so I don't have any current way of routing cables um, from the cockpit area through into the rest of the wing. So that's why I haven't glued this part yet. I'm gonna have to cut out lots of uh, area from the back here up to the front. And then the same for into the wingspan where, um, you know, we have the servos connecting through uh, to the elevons and stuff. So, um, like I said, I'm learning actually really a lot from going through this process about 3D printing and, you know, building your own wing at the same time. So I, I'm i not convinced this will fly well, mainly because I think it's lacking some of the rigidity that it needs. I think if it hits, uh, I'm gonna crash. When I do crash, I think it isn't gonna survive well, but I'm gonna do some test prints of some of these components to try and learn the right, better way of doing it. So that's gonna be interesting to learn. But I'm gonna persevere uh, and do a follow-up video on this with the different components going into it. So I need to try and uh, find a carbon rod that I can use to add some structural rigidity in here. The main thing is all these things, the carbon rod and stuff, I can reuse those because obviously what if this, when this gets obliterated, it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, it's interesting trying to connect these things together and try and keep it relatively smooth. I'm not sure how jaggedy it looks uh, on camera, but there is a little bit of slight misalignment. Um, but again, I think, I don't know if it's gonna be easier or harder when it's printed a bit better, but at least it looks like the flying wing that's supposed to. Obviously these will sit into these um, cutouts when it's all done, but I'm really putting off gluing the rest of these bits together until I have the rest of the components so I can use my soldering iron to cut channels through. So sorry, the, the light just seems to run out. But yeah, it, it looks pretty much like it needs to. Um, obviously the other parts for me to do will be to um, glue this on to the end and then that is then where the motor will screw into here and then plug into here and you can put some bolts and some glue through to keep it in place. So yeah, it looks like a wing. That's the main thing. And at least I've got my head around how everything fits together. And I'm actually, again, I'm still really happy with the quality of the print. Um, yeah, I'm just interested to see what happens. So I think there'll be two more stages to this video. Um, we'll do a follow-up stage where I am installing the electronics and try and run the cabling. And obviously then a third video will be 
actually trying to see if this thing will fly. So it's going to take a few more weeks or months, I think, until uh, I get all the bits. And I'm not quite sure what sequence I will share this uh, video with you all, but uh, I'm pretty happy that it looks it looks like a wing. And uh, yeah, I just have to make sure I fly it because part of my brain thinks this is actually really cool. I could just give it to my kids and they'd love it. Um, and then I'll probably smash it up in a few seconds. But yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with how this is all fitting together and how it's working. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty cool. I'm not sure, again, how, how much gluing I need to, to do or not. I think this whole section needs to be glued together. You know, to work as a full uh, aileron, but uh, yeah, it's good. So please let me know below in the comments. Maybe you printed one of these before. Um, maybe you got some more questions about the Wanho uh, Two K Nine Mark Two. Do my best to answer them, and it might obviously lead into some of the other videos about this. But um, yeah. But yeah, overall I'm happy. A little bit disappointed I didn't slice it properly, but apart from that, you know, not bad progress for the first session. Okay, so I just spotted something. I thought this hole here was where I was going to have to route the servo cables through, but actually these holes come all the way through to the middle, so that's not a problem actually. I can route the cables. This uh, hole is for a carbon fibre rod. So I just measured that up, so actually I can glue a little bit more of this kind of wing together and order a carbon rod. So I just need to measure quite how long that's going to be. It's going to be about 30, 35 centimetres or so. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.